I think that are going based on last night. If <laughs> if you follow the broadcast, okay, and you're in the Kirk Herb Street side of things, you're saying this is the greatest comeback of all time. We've never seen a quarterback do this in the history of the NFL. And also, Baker Mayfield made a mockery of training camp. I don't know if you heard that line that he threw right. Yeah. Yes, no. He, there's no point. There's no point going to training camp, Levar. I'm not sure if you know that. Um, there's the other side where you go. If you're a Raiders fan, what the hell was that? It's unbelievable. They've got three of, of the worst losses that I can recall. The, the Cardinals loss, the Jeff Saturday loss. Not even the Colts. I'm going to say Jeff Saturday. And whatever the hell that was last night, no wonder Birdo boozes up and then walks home from bars. Mm, now I yeah. get it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like that was unbelievable. What that, the hell th- happened? By the way, think if they win that game. But and you're up 13 points in the fourth quarter with how many left before they scored the, that nine minute drive that just ate up the entire fourth quarter. Yeah, to get them within a touchdown, I was thinking to myself, all right, like that's great progress. This has been incredible by Baker Mayfield because you know you, you go in there on Tuesday and you're trying to run an offense on Thursday. It's ridiculous. It it, it really is. However, he's also been in the league five years. Like, that was one of the things that I, I kind of, when Kirk's saying that, I'm like, this isn't Connor Cook trying to start a game in the playoffs for the, what, the Raiders yeah. back when Derek Carr got hurt. It's a little different. Like, he's been around enough. He's on his third team in five years, and he's seen a lot of systems from his time in Cleveland, Carolina, and, and now with L.A. And so he should be able to go out there and basically throw a few different concepts, even if he hasn't worked with those guys. Like, football is football. It wasn't that that was quite impressive. It was more of the two-minute drive down the stretch because that's something that, you know, he's out there just kind of slinging it around. But it does take you to have some knowledge of that. And so I'm sure, and and the reason why I'm sure is, like, my first start in the NFL my second year was on a short week. Found out late Monday night. Had one week of practice on Tuesday. Thursday, baby. Yeah. And so part of the way you prepare for something like that is you're, you're handling the situations first. You're saying, all right, two-minute, third down, red zone. These are the things that I really need to key in on because first and second down, they're probably going to run the football a decent amount. You know, first and second down, probably going to be quick game, play-action pass, things that aren't overly, overly complicated. Play, most play-action pass plays, it's just a progression. One, two, three, check down. One, two, check down. And that's it because you're going to get max protection. So there's not quite as much that you're as concerned about compared to the drop-back game like when you're in sec- or two minute drives, like when you're in third and long, and, and you saw some of those completions on third and long. So, look, Sean McVay's a hell of a play caller. That that helped there too. But I also think he's got a great rapport for working and pulling out the best in quarterbacks. So, incredible job by by Baker and, and McVay, but also incredible letdown by the Raiders defense. Awful. Oof. I mean, I mean, it still takes having timing, you know, like the. The fact Not a that lot of those was, routes, though. When you look at it, some, some of third down for sure. But like, when you're just throwing posts and anything down the field or deeper crossing routes, it's not about so much timing in that respect. A lot of that's just like, hey, I've just got to drop back, get to a certain point. And I throw mean, it like, to that point on the field. Yeah, I mean, and, and, okay. and, it, and it, it, the funny thing was, obviously, Baker, based on a couple of the rud gaffes, you're like, well, he p- clearly studied throwing the football more than he did, like, his footwork at the handoffs, which is what you do as a quarterback. You know, sometimes the run plays, you might kind of take for granted which way you're going and all that, gloss over it. But um, uh, the way they were doing it with the seven-man protections, you know, a tight end running back to kind of chip and help on the edges with, with Jones and Crosby, there's, there's really only, a, you know, a couple guys, three guys out in the route progression. So – you know you're getting protected, and then you know really one, two, three where I'm going. And, and that's, that's the nice thing about all of those deeper drops and those, those seven-man protection plays. It's not quite as um, relying, reliant on the timing and chemistry with the receivers. So, again, smart by Sean McVay to have those plays, the boots, uh, the roll right they got on the fourth and one to Acres that he completed that extended the first touchdown drive. All those things are, are really, really smart because they're plays Baker's run, and they don't involve timing and chemistry. Mm. He outplayed Derek Carr. I know that. Jeez. I mean, that's that's a fact. That that was brutal last night. And, like, they, were, they made the point, and I'll give them credit. They said, man, you know, the Rams are banged up. Raheem Morris and, and what they're doing on defense is keeping them in this game because the Raiders should have ran away with that game. And you're looking up at the score going, 
there's still hope for some reason. Like they they couldn't like they, they Devonte Adams had that one big catch. He only Devontae, finished with three grabs. Yeah. yeah, but he made some really big grabs. He did, but he made some big grabs. Not I mean, enough. They, you know, listen, it wasn't a high scoring affair. Um, so there was defense. You know, even even in their collapse. I mean, the the Rams didn't give up a whole lot. You know, in the game. It's just sad that they're, what they gave up happened when it happened. You know, that's what's sad for the Rams. You know, I mean, it, it's just one of those things I think they can't – They well, not the Rams, excuse me, for, for, the, for the Raiders. It, it's like you can't get a – they can't get a break. You know, the Rams haven't been able to get a break, and they finally did get a break. But it, it was just – it was interesting to see – that this has been a, a pattern that they've created, you know, get leads, have a lead for as long as they have, and then some way, somehow, they let it get away. And, and, and the biggest question that I had, you know, after after leaving that game was, why are they making the mistakes that they're making? I mean, like the turnovers that, that took place, the, the big-time fumble that took place in the third that, you know, it was just ball security. It was well. That was different. Sure. I mean, you you saw Josh Jacobs' hand. I mean, he broke his yeah. hand yeah. on planning on that. I mean, I, I was yeah. gonna say like I, like how much did the injury play a factor? Because he literally could only hold the ball in his left arm because his right hand was broken. And you yeah. saw in the one play on the sideline, he tried a stiff arm, and it was in a ton of pain. And for a guy that makes that offense go. I feel like you're limited, right? Like, I don't even know yeah, how yeah. – I don't think they target him. And then in the throwing game after that, because he was playing with one hand out there. He was like Roy Munson. Yeah. yeah. But if you're going to be out there, you got to hold it. If you're going to be out there and you have the ball, you got to hold I, I just – you know, I, and I get that and I, I understand that, but it's just little things that take away the, the, the momentum, little things that give a team that – you know, these are both two teams that – are struggling this year. So you can't you got to you know you just got to limit limit any type of giving them hope because it, I mean at times there were, there was it was ugly. You know some of some of the games, some of the parts it, you know it was it was kind of ugly or there was there was defense, you know and I I don't know. I I just think the way these guys lose is is I think that's way harder the way to, to accept the fact like saying okay, they're they're not a good team. But yeah, they like they could easily have three more wins than what they have right now. Well, let and, me and, let me pose this uh, to you because because before uh, before the game, I was like, all right, they're gonna win this game. They're gonna get six and seven, and maybe outside <laughs> shot like that's four in a row. <laughs> maybe they're a playoff team if they keep this rolling because their schedule's not that difficult. Especially with San Francisco now with Brock Purdy at quarterback, not Jimmy G. You start kind of rolling through it a little bit. Week 18, they had the Chiefs. Maybe the Chiefs aren't starting the starters because they've got locked up that number one spot and already the division. So you start kind of playing through those scenarios. And now after that loss, that, that sort of collapse up 13 in the fourth like that, Jeez. you start going, wait a second, is, is Josh Martino safe? I mean, we, we've talked about – how you know Mark Davis is cash strapped that it'd be hard to be able to pay off McDaniels, pay off Dave Ziegler, the general manager, who they brought in together as a team. I mean, we're seeing John Carroll University pictures of those two together. But it'd be really tough to have to pay off everyone to go find another head coach. Meanwhile, you already had to pay off John Gruden from what was owed. And we can surely get into the him. list of people that are now a part of that lawsuit. It, Welcome to the Washington Commanders. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it, when they lose, like these are like bad losses. Like these are egregious double digit leads. And you're looking around going, what the hell, man? Like undisciplined, like the penalties that kept that final drive going. I mean, Baker Mayfield was has been there an hour and a half and went 98 yards on their defense. Like, what the hell right. was that? And you can well, say, by the way, Ben Skoranek, dude. I mean, it's hey, stepping Notre up Dame, big baby. time. Well, I just yeah. – I don't know that anyone expected that. I mean, the third down conversions, the bigger plays down the stretch, I mean, it was – he became kind of like his go-to guy for a little bit. So it's always nice to have a, a big target to throw to you like You want to hear – uh, yeah, go, go go, no. well, I was going to say, speaking of Jeff Saturday, if this was Jeff Saturday's coach teams losing the way that they just lost last night, you know what we would be saying? No, he'll be the at ESPN by February. He's, he's yeah. in over his head. He doesn't know what he's doing. 
how do you blow a league like a lead like this and and here we are looking at a guy that's a proven vet in this game as a coach and they're they're having epic breakdowns you know during the, and listen they did have a nice little run going but you can't lose games this way yeah. like you you just can't uh, lose games this way it, it's tough i mean both both teams had injuries you know the raiders offensive line was playing with two guys down just from the uh just, like with the right tackle if they were Mumford had to come in and he was playing he's a rookie out of ohio state they had uh simpson come in the, the draft pick they had a few years ago i believe he came in the right guard spot i mean that entire right side of the offensive line, you know, all of a sudden looked like a, a completely different group in the second half due to some of the injuries, too. I'm not trying to make excuses for them. It was just an odd, odd game. And the way the whole game flow went down and, you know, how you really give, give Jalen Ramsey credit. You know, everyone wants to talk about that ridiculous catch by Devontae Adams. I, I, you saw Ramsey matched up on Adams pretty much the rest of the game. There yeah, wasn't much going on. Like he, like he, he kept him to three catches, and and yeah. I, I don't know. I just look at it. At Baker Mayfield, by the way, afterwards, and I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on this. He was talking with the Amazon Prime crew, and him and Ryan Fitzpatrick were both like, "Yeah, we were shocked that they were in press coverage that final touchdown to Van Jefferson." Like yeah. they, they couldn't, he's like, I thought for sure they were going to drop back knowing the situation. He goes, once I saw that, he, that they were just there, I just threw it up to him. Like they were shocked. So that's just, uh, I, well, that, I, that's what I'm saying. Like Patrick Graham, who's the defensive coordinator for the, the Raiders is supposed to have a, a solid reputation as like a defensive mind. I'm like, dude, no one's running the football right now. What are you doing? <laughs> You got a running back. I mean, like you've got a Cam Akers who had a, a fumble early in the game, and it felt like they kind of lost some confidence in him after that. Like a lot of just kind of play action, and from time to time they'd give it to him, but they 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 really kind of just shifted to say, "Hey, we're down two scores. We need to throw to get back." And I'm like, the easiest thing you could do for a quarterback is play press man to man, or even press post high zone. Now I just I'm working to a matchup. I, I don't have to read anything, especially with a go route. So I just. I was, I was a bit surprised. That's why I kind of come into it as a quarterback saying, look, it was incredible how Baker was able to go in there and execute and play. He is a five-year veteran who started a lot of football games in this league and played in a bunch of different systems. So I, I didn't walk into it like and write it off like I think Ryan Fitzpatrick or some of the others on the set were at halftime saying, like, oh, this isn't going to work. Like, no, dude, he's played football. He knows football. He played a lot in college. Like, he's an experienced guy. He's a smart guy. It, but you can't give him, like, easy, easy reads and things. Otherwise, like, you give him every opportunity to go in there and do what he did last night. He also pointed out, he said, look, I don't I don't like the fact that I've had so many different head coaches throughout the course of my career. He goes, but all that stuff came in handy. He's like, all those concepts, 100%. all those offenses came in handy in those moments because I realized, man, I've played through a lot of this stuff. So, you know, it, wasn't, well, it, it was fo- there for football him. Football is football. You call it different stuff, but you've had a bunch of different people – kind of coach you up and, and here's what you come to realize and trust me I, I played on enough teams to know and you know kind of went around the block like that to know you, you, you know what every coach will, will start to realize and agree with is when you when, when you do something that works like they can have a system they can have footwork they can have a read they can have a progression but if, if you do enough things that work they'll look at you and be like well wait so why do you do it this way and they'll start asking you questions and the older you get, the more you play or the more you've been around certain coaches, they'll say, hey, I've seen it done a lot of ways. You do it how you feel comfortable. You do it how you feel most confident because that's what you're going to lead to the most success. It's not the coach out there doing anything that you know make those plays. He might put you in that position, but once you're in that position as a player, you have to execute. You know, Your footwork, your eyes, everything else that you're doing as a quarterback has to be – you have to be comfortable and confident in in order to deliver those throws. And so th- that's part of it, man. It's like he had nothing to lose going out there, did he? No. And, and, and that's that, and that's that's where you can be dangerous. If yeah. You're Baker Mayfield. Yeah. You can wake up dangerous about. if you, like, you got nothing to lose. Oh, oh. That's how it works. Oh, oh.